Kyoto Protocol has commitments for specific emission reductions that run through the end of 2012. So all the focus for the last three rounds of negotiation have been on what happens after December 31st, 2012. So we have about a little over a year from, from now before that will happen. And as I have indicated, there, there is very little prospect that, that the, the uh, tough issues will be resolved in a binding treaty. So what might actually happen? Well, that's the result, uh, that's part of a, of, a, of a research project I've been involved in, which uh, has concluded that the reason we can't get an agreement is because we have um, been negotiating a pollution control treaty. And basically, it's not in the interest of any country to come back from the negotiations and tell the citizens of your country that you have brought them shared pain, which is what you'll have to do. You're going to have to stop doing things if you're in the country that's emitting. You're going to have to start paying if you're in a country that is able to give money. It's just not a, it, there is nothing in any national interest that, uh, that, that, that uh, is, uh, is in the approach that we're using. We look at, uh, quote, we have quotations in this report, this paper we've published that is coming out shortly uh, from uh, five different uh, leaders, uh, Russia, United States, uh, Poland, uh, India, uh, and, um, and all of them say the same thing. We can't do more for climate change because it will harm our economy. And so it is the economy, stupid. <laughs> and we have to recognize that countries want to develop and they believe that putting out more carbon dioxide allows them to develop. And in fact, that's not true. Uh, there are ways to deliver the same energy services with far less carbon. And what we need is an international system that will do that. And this past summer, I was invited by uh, several uh, UN ambassadors uh, to meet with 20-some ambassadors, along with someone from the World Bank and someone from uh, Deutsche Bank and someone from... Uh, uh, UN Development, UNDESA, the uh, agency, UN agency, uh, to talk about getting renewable energy, low carbon renewable energy, into the, into the economies of developing countries. So I see the ability to provide low carbon, low emission uh, energy services uh, to all countries as a, as, as, a, as, a, as a place where we could agree. And if we started doing that, and we did it well, we could ramp up the uh, introduction of renewable energy faster than we're ramping up fossil fuels, which is not the case today. We are ramping up renewable energy incredibly rapidly, but we are still building more coal plants in China and elsewhere uh, even faster. So if we could begin to shift that dynamic, we would start to get a handle on this, even in countries like China and India and the United States. The Europeans, by the way, will meet their Kyoto target by the end of next year. They were supposed to reduce, uh, actually without the United States, it's about 4.5%. With the United States, it would be 5.2%. They'll probably meet it even with the United States not playing. In other words, counting the U.S. emissions will probably still be below the 5.2% that all developed countries have to reduce by by the end of next year. That's an accomplishment. It's a very impressive accomplishment. And uh, I think we can now uh, begin to see, though, that uh, things have shifted. Uh, developing countries are now responsible for something like 57% uh, of emissions. In 1990, they were uh, responsible for one-third. So there's been this huge shift. So we have to figure out how to go this next step. And I think a development strategy of low-carbon emissions is the way to go.